Thank you all for coming, uh, my friends, guests. And I would, at the beginning, I would uh, like to, on behalf of uh, Tomislav Medak, who helped me a lot, not just here, but also <clears throat> working for 15 years now together. Uh, uh, <clears throat> so I got all of the credits here, which is kind of uh, yeah, nice, but uh, uh, Tommy should get uh, at least that, 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 that much. Uh, also, uh, uh, Dubrovka, dear Dubrovka. And uh, on behalf of three of us, I would like to uh, thank Academy Schloss Soltu, uh, Kunstverein, uh, and especially Sa uh, Sahar. Uh, Sahar helped us a lot uh, because the Linux is not the best uh, uh, platform for, uh, for the, you know, producing all these PDFs and things like that. Uh, Lotte, Sophie, Charlotte, Hero, Sophie, er Erman Trout, uh, people on the setup, uh, all the hackers here and all of the hackers uh, everywhere, uh, all of the artists, uh, all of the yeah, friend artists, and yeah, all of the speakers. So I'll just like go with the, <clears throat> with the public library. So this is about recognizing invisible infrastructures. Uh, it's uh, recognizing the benefits uh, we get from the society being a society. <clears throat> Something we got from the centuries of struggles for equality, for the, for the decent life for every member of society. And um, this, is, this is a journey about one particular invisible infrastructure, but the one which also reflects on, uh, on all other, uh, most of the time, invisible infrastructures. Uh, so, in order to start, <clears throat> we should go and find the foundation of public library. So, we should kind of reduce, because it's, it's here. Uh, we, we got to use, we got to, uh, yeah, we, we kind of, uh, we recognize it. When you, when you ask people about public libraries, it's almost in, in every town, in every village, people kind of recognize it. But is it really that we recognize after all of these years? If you recognize what was the foundation, what's the what's what's the idea behind, what's the nucleus, what's the value, why do we have the uh, public library? So we should go into that foundation, into the constitution of the public library. And I would like to say that there are like at least two. One is the library, and that's the, the fantasy, which is all the time wrong, that we can uh, we can get to know the universe, that we humans can actually finally uh, know something about the totality, something about the universality, that we can know about how we know, that we can know knowledge, that we can, uh, we can get there. That's a fantasy, of course, it doesn't work, especially in the 20th century, it kind of proved so many times. But still, I think that there is a fantasy, and that fantasy is a, is a fuel for getting and know more. But then, even more than that, what is super important is uh, in public library, what does it mean to have public library? So there is fantasy that we know, uh, but then there is also about like who, who would know that, so for whom, why? Uh, and that's for every member of society. So that's something which uh, couldn't happen without some, some of the struggles. Uh, it couldn't happen without the French Revolution. And here, I will make my argument mostly in, I would say, in the scope of the liberal thought, because the liberals are running the planet, and the planet and the society and the, in, 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 in global is in a huge crisis. So at least we should reflect on that. And uh, I can't really like mask my position. I'm a communist, I'm sorry. Uh, but I think that, uh, <clears throat> that before we get into the struggle for communism, uh, we can also make an argument which is in the legacy of the, of the liberal thought. And that's the <clears throat> free access to books, free access to knowledge for every member of society. We couldn't get it without the 19th century. We couldn't get it uh, without, the French, uh, without the French Revolution. We couldn't think of that. Then, another one is that <clears throat> there is a library catalog. I will talk about that more uh, later. And then one which is like super important, <clears throat> and that's uh, there's a librarian. And that's the, 
that's about humans. So when we get into the structured knowledge, when we get into that kind of going further with the knowing more about what we know, knowing more about the world, uh, we make quite some like structured knowledge and then engineers would get really into that fantasy and then they would tend to replace the humans, they would tend to replace the, you know, like the, the functionality, the efficiency, all of these like uh, very, in many ways, very wrong values when they are primary values. They would start to like replace humans everywhere, so then that means that we can also replace librarians because we can have a good search algorithm. We can have, we can have Amazon, Google, Apple and all of these to maintain our catalogs and that's what they do today. So uh, I would say that um, the catalog, um, that when they are, that them like uh, competing catalogs, like classifications, the lists, you know, like from the daily life, the list which we you have like competing lists, like to do lists, you know. So one to do list is winning over another to do lists, and usually the one which you don't see as the most important one. Because we are humans, you know, so you do things, you procrastinate because one to-do list was just winning over another one, which was too ambitious. But then there are also other like lists and catalogs which are competing uh, among each other. And then I would say that the one which would, uh, if there is only one kind of characteristic, the one which will win over another is the one which provides you available things. If there is a list of things, then the list of available things, even being smaller, will win over the ones which are like bigger. Because usually we are interested not just in the lists, uh, not just about, uh, about metadata, but we are also interested in, in, in the data. So when there, is a, uh, when there is a catalog of internet, for example, you want to click on the item of a catalog, and then you want to get there. And that's what Google did. So when you search, a huge catalog of internet on google.com, then what you expect is that you get that web page, otherwise it wouldn't be really useful. So in that sense, uh, Google is controlling the catalog, Google is cataloging, Google is making the list of all of all, all, everything available on internet and then they provide you user interface the way how you can search through that. And that's why today they are in many ways are controlling uh, the internet. And another one which is interesting is Amazon, <coughs> which makes a list of, let's just start with the books, there are like many other things, but available books. These books are not necessarily available as we got to use to the available things on the internet, so we can't download just like immediately. But still, this is the list of, in some way, available with one click. You know that they also got a patent for one click. So if that click uh, provides the financial transaction to Amazon, then it's available through <coughs> one click. But you have to be financially, uh, how do you say that? Yeah, better than the others uh, in order to get it. So um, that's a little bit about the library catalog. So then we can, we can imagine the, the library catalog of everything, or like particular <coughs> things. And let's start with the books. I must say that the books, yeah, maybe I can say a few things about books here. There is a little digression. So I think that the books are important because uh, in the world of digital, at least, it's comprehensible. It's doable. Only few people can, ca can care about a huge amount <coughs> of books. So I will, I will, I will give you like a couple of, uh, couple of uh, kind of scale. So I have, at the moment, I have around, no, like Femke and Tommy. They have like 400 books, and they know quite a lot about books. And I remember the time when I had 400 books, I knew quite a lot about every one of these books, even I didn't read them. So I'm not talking about here about reading. I, re I read a lot about these books. I read a lot of the context, how I got these books. So I knew a lot about these books, but not necessarily reading all of these books. And I don't think that we should get into that trap that we need and we have to read all of the books. We can discuss that in the next three days. So then I got to the 2,000 books. And now I don't have 
at, 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 when I'm tired like, like today, I don't have a good overview of 2,000 uh, books. I think that when it goes to 500, it's okay. Then there is monoscope, uh, which is here, uh, one of the artworks. Uh, or like, it's just like part of that great infrastructure. Right? We shouldn't call it a, a work. It's uh, about, let's say, around like 3,000 books on monoscope log. Dushan is here. Is it 3,000, 4,000? Ah, you have no idea. Okay, yeah, we have to count it. Anyway, that's, that's a five years of, of selection of a very uh, a specific sensibility which Dushan has. Uh, and it's, it's great. Uh, if you didn't hear about Monoscope, you kind of, you are not on the internet really. And you are not, uh, you're not part of these discussions. Because a monoscope in five years got into such a status, which is, uh, which is great, which is like a symbolic capital of that is, is huge. I, I met a few people in Barcelona, they're running the, the publishing company. They said to me, and I knew about them, not because I, I'm reading their books, it's in architecture, so it's kind of not my topic. Oh, thanks. And Duby told me, that's a great publishing <laughs> company. So we met, and then they said, Dushan, you know Dushan, you know, you know, like, you know, guy for, uh, 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 behind Monoscope. He made our day, he made our year when he illegally put their book on Monoscope. So that's how Monoscope is great. So it's kind of like a 4,000 books. Then there is ARG. ARG is around like 30,000, 40,000 books. Yeah, again, you don't know. <laughs> but I would say that that's, uh, that's kind of the scale. I'm, I'm not like uh, missing the scale. And that's done by thousands of people who upload the books on ARC. Maybe I can show you that. Um, and people there <coughs> like, uh, make also, produce the knowledge about that knowledge. So they collect the knowledge, they aggregate that knowledge, but then they also put it into uh, catalogs, uh, collections, and then in these collections, um, I, I can't see what's there. So. Technology doesn't work, but this is still under control. I'm pretty sure that it will work when I do this. Okay. Um, if not, huh, what? Yeah. Oh, yeah. See? Um, yeah, so, so here, oh, I'm sorry. So here you can see these uh, collections. Um, Thousands of, of people are doing that, and it's a great it's a great resource. Uh, then I would say that uh, when you go to Library Genesis, um, is that link here? Yeah. Okay, uh, Library Genesis is around like a, is around like a million books. That's the that's one of the most important moments in this uh, in this exhibition. That big Genesis there, white could be also black. We were thinking about making that black, but from now on, just imagine that as a black genesis. Behind that, you can see more than a million of books, and that's, the, that's a great story. This uh, story is about, um, is about like uh, 10 years of collecting books online, uh, and then at any given moment, you would have a winner. You would have a one uh, website, which is the biggest one, where everybody go, because that's the network kind of economy, because you know it's there, everybody there, everybody knows about the reference, so then that's why you go there. And maybe a few of you remember the Wikipedia, library.nu, if, uh, if you didn't, then this is the great place, because you will hear a lot about that world. So Wikipedia, library.nu, before Library Genesis, was the biggest one. And then when it got shut down, and it got shut down because of the court case, because they proved that, that uh, people who were running library.nu were having some financial transactions with, uh, with a company called ifile.it and things like that. So it was like a business, so they were like ruining uh, the publishers' businesses. You know, you know the story. And um, <clears throat> yeah, and then they, 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 they got shut down, and everybody, at least on my Facebook wall, everybody were crying. Like, oh, what's, yeah, where we will download all these books which we will catalog maybe and never read. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, of course, um, and for, for, for a while, 
uh, there were there were not. There was like a empty, you know, like people were asking, what, what's the what's the next one? And then the library genesis was the next one. But it was not only next, as in just the next, but they made something different. So what they allowed, and that was the gesture which was never done by other winners in the past, like library.nu. So they let you download all of the books from Library Genesis. We did it for Ljubljana, for example, two years ago. <clears throat> and in Ljubljana, it was like the first kind of similar event like this one, where we claimed that some space for a certain number of days, it's a public library. And, and, and there, it took, us, it took us like a, a huge pipe and like three weeks, four weeks, more, and we didn't have everything. We were claiming that we had everything, but we were lying. So now you can hear, we didn't have everything <laughs> in Ljubljana. But no one really noticed that. Um, because it was like hundreds of thousands. So it's now around like 13 or 15 terabytes. It's in between 1 and 2 million books. So I'm trying to get you into the, the scale, so what's comprehensible. Um, and then, um, yeah, I can tell you a few more numbers. I heard that uh, Erkab.org uh, uh, digitized like two and a half million books and most of them are like uh, in public domain because if you are the public institution then you're not allowed to digitize anything but very old texts who can't compete on the market. Uh, so it's around like a two and a half million. Google claimed that they digitized 25 million books and the uh, Google team uh, did a research and they say that there are like a 100 50 million books ever published. And uh, I didn't see the, the right uh, reference. Is it only in English? That could be uh, sometimes done by the American, um, <laughs> American centrism or whatever. Anyway, these are the scales. So what I'm trying to say is that some, of, some parts of some range of that scale is possible to do individually. So you can do like a couple of hundred books. You can, after a while, you can do a couple of thousand books on your own, just as an individual. And I claim that with enough of the hackers' uh, labor, there are only like, uh, only like 20 people, we can take care of all of the books available. And I'll go back why the books are uh, important. So the books are important <clears throat> um, because that's the, that's the signifier of knowledge in our society. So for most of the people with the experience of using digital networks, uh, that's about, um, it's, it's kind of the same. If you have movie, if you have image, if you have text as a web page, a blog post, a tweet, you know, there is not a big difference in, in between these. It's a format. It, there are like quite some media theory you can uh, theorize around it. But when we come to the society, when we, we, need, when we need to make an argument, when, it, when we need to make an argument for, uh, in, in the scope of liberal thought, uh, then we have to use book, because book is very strong. That means knowledge. When you say movie, even if it's Tarkovsky, it's still entertainment. And when you say the book, even some grades of shade or something, it would be a knowledge. It's kind of, it's a strange thing about like a semiotics. So, <clears throat> yeah, uh, I'll go back. This is why books. So, uh, we could do more, but I think that it's very important oops, to focus and to focus on books. So, the books, because of the signif of, of, of significance of the meaning in the society, but also because it's comprehensible. When it gets to the movies, we can't do that without a huge investment. There are few people who can do that. Sebastian and Jan are here. Uh, they can do that, but very few people can. Like 15,000 15, of movies, like huge kind of archives. But they are very special in many ways. Also, what is what I'm especially like happy and, and proud is that Text.com, which was another winner from the very long time ago, uh, uh, Text.com around like uh, 2000. That was the monoscope of, of that time, and then uh, uh, Sebastian got in problems with the people who didn't understand Adorno, and then they were complaining about Adorno texts on uh, text.com, and then in unfortunate chain of events, 
uh, we lost uh, text.com and here we have it. And I really recommend to start to play the text.com as a game from today and then you will get all historical, the whole repository. Just uh, talk, to, to, talk to Sebastian. So I'll just like <clears throat> end this uh, little part with, uh, with something which got like uh, quoted uh, quite, uh, quite a few times. So, with books ready to be shared, meticulously catalogued, everyone is a librarian, and that's the kind of message which we have here. So, it's very, very easy to, to become a librarian today. And when everyone is a librarian, library is everywhere. So, it's kind of a poetic, little poetic moment, uh, which we fully support. So, I'll tell you a little bit about the met methodology here. So, we came up with... Um, oh, Mm. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is the repertorium. <clears throat> this, is, this is what we found very interesting. So repertorium, you know, like when you have a book, you have a metadata. You have a title, an author. You, you need to like produce some knowledge about that item, <coughs> like some structured knowledge. And then it can be easily manipulated with computers and humans. And then we get into more. Uh, knowledge and then it's good that we control it and that we don't just give it to Google, for example, things like that. Uh, and then uh, you can get into collections, not just into items. So there was a, the, the, that's the methodology in kind of uh, culture of li librarians that, uh, that you come with a request, like I want to explore this or that, and then um, the librarian will, uh, will come back to you and say, okay, this is what I found, and then it will give you in a structured way. <coughs> so it will give you, you know, what's the collection, uh, what was, who was the creator, what's the abstract, how, how they got there, and, and, and things like that. And we, we want to use that in a little bit less structured way. So we like to play here uh, in, in, in with some possibilities of, of using some of the terms metaphorically, so like extending that. So here we would like to do um, a little bit of storytelling. So repertorium for us is the narrative device where we structure, we bring you the context uh, and structure about some collection and then we tell you the story about some items of that. So we will have, in, you will see in the program, we will have some sessions uh, from librarians as the storytellers. And this is also what you can find on every table. So that's what we did uh, uh, here. So you can see that all of the uh, all of the works here, text.com, Ubu, you heard, uh, probably Kevin Goldsmith. We also have his um, uh, his work there, um, uh, printed like from the printing out the internet. Uh, so all of these are collections, and these collections uh, have stories behind that. They have stories inside of them. There are stories which can be told, which can be uh, told by people who are using that. There are stories which can be told by people who are creating that. There are a lot of stories, and that's what we would like to get in. Um, yeah, and um, what else? Let me see. Um, I didn't mention all of them, let me see. Yeah, I mentioned like the Genesis. Yeah, I'll tell you just about like a few works which you can find here. I will tell you the uh, small uh, parts of these uh, stories. Um, yeah, so there is Documenta done. That's a, that's a nice uh, piece of work, a piece of art. So there are a lot of misunderstandings. So what we are talking here is a huge misunderstanding in between the world and what we have in terms of the infrastructure, especially knowledge infrastructures. So, uh, the world thought that the public library is nice, so that people can build the buildings, they can bring the books, they can invite all of the people from the town, everybody can come into that public library. At the time when any, not, not, not any public library could really like bring all of the knowledge. But then, with the internet, we got into some chance to actually get that, so to make it into the huge public library, never seen. And that was like, a, a, that was ruined. And as we go with the internet, it's just like ruined more and more. You can, you can hear a, a lot about it. So one of the early misunderstandings with Documenta 
was that uh, documenta, you probably heard of documenta, the art institution, uh, festival, so they kind of paid some attention to internet works in 1997, and then there was a misunderstanding, so they said, our website will get shut down and then we will sell you a CD. I mean, now it like, sounds completely ridiculous, but at that time, they're, they're smart people, so they just made a little mistake, and then Vuk Josic was the one to remind them that that's a big misunderstanding, because at that time Vuk Josic was much more into understanding what's going on. So what Vuk Josic did is kind of a simple gesture, downloading the whole website, and then making it available, so that there is no really big sense of uh, shutting it down. And that's the documenta done. Uh, then we have um, uh, another very interesting story of Yarina, uh, Dushan, uh, sorry, Dragon, uh, with uh, one terabyte of a uh, kilobyte age. So there is a story behind the GeoCities. At one moment, it was a huge, the, the, the biggest uh, uh, resource for people to express themselves. So millions of people had their home pages there. And uh, that was like a, quite some uh, festival of self-expression. But then it got kind of structured, the internet got structured in a way that we got into like these kind of things. And uh, yeah, it got structured enough that it can fit into the small screen, into a few buttons. And, but we lost quite some culture uh, while transforming the whole internet into these kind of things. And then at one moment it was not like a profitable to run it. And um, uh, yeah, then they offered two terabytes to download if people care about it. And there are people who care about it and you can like check it out uh, what uh, Oya and Dragon did with that. We have also a few other, uh, <clears throat> few other works here. One which is super important is how we get the books. So at the moment, these are available. It's huge. You can't read it. Don't even try. Like, it's at least like a million of books in English. But there is another problem that in many languages, which has a great culture, you actually can read all of the books which are available today online, which is a, which is a big problem. You know, like there is a hegemony of, of English. There are a lot of benefits of using standards. There are a lot of benefits of using English language. But at the same time, there are like quite few problems around that. And some of the ways how we can, like, uh, how we can address that is by using the uh, book scanners. And uh, some of these works were done uh, in Zagreb. We have uh, two collections here. Uh, uh, Tommy with the others in Zagreb was uh, scanning some of the books which are very important for us which are coming from the Yugoslav uh, socialism, uh, communism, Marxism, which are in the especially countries in transition, Eastern Europe, it's completely forbidden and in, in a way a taboo. Some people would come back to that, but mostly in like these kind of circles where we sit, but we, when we think about the like, world, it's especially our world where we live, it's not really the language uh, and the, uh, uh, the, the knowledge uh, which is kind of uh, yeah, uh, in, in circulation. So we, we, we do that. And there are book scanners in uh, Ljubljana, Belgrade, Berlin, and also in the anarchist colony California by Barcelona. And what you can see from the denominator of all of that is that we don't go and digitize everything. That's what Google promises. But we go and digitize what is important and what is important to them. So that's kind of the message from that. And uh, Herman Wall, uh, Herman's library is uh, rather like a collection of a, of a bigger uh, a project. Uh, J.K. Samuel, who was also a fellow at, um, at uh, Schloss Solitude. So she got in, uh, co uh, in correspondence with um, Herman Wallace, who was a member of uh, Angola Tree and member of the Black Terra. He was in jail. Uh, there is a lot of like uh, uh, unfair moments of that story, but at one moment there was something very beautiful and uh, poetic happened. So they started to talk about his uh, dream house, a fantasy of his uh, house while he was in jail. And then part of that is um, 
is uh, his dream library. And here we have it uh, with the correspondence, which also happened with uh, Mr. Jolie. We will talk about that uh, on Sunday. That brings some of the issues of the freedom of speech, what is uh, allowed to have in a collection. And then when you look at that from the US, then you always see the freedom of speech. And then, you know, like all of that kind of luggage. But then when you think of that from some other perspectives, for example, Germany, then it, it looks a little bit different when you Look at that uh, from Balkan, for example, again, it kind of changed the shape. So this is what, what will be brought uh, on Sunday. Uh, and that's, again, what, where I would like, yeah, I think that I would like uh, end here. So I would just like uh, to remind you that this is about uh, uh, invisible infrastructures, making it more visible, making it with uh, kind of uh, playing with uh, imaginary, playing with the storytelling, playing with maybe some uh, new epistemologies, a new kind of uh, new myths, mythology. And th we, we need more of that because these dreams were dreamt in like a 19th century, usually by people who were quite deep into the colonial, imperial, whatever uh, world. But still we can revisit that. And I think that there is quite something here when we revisit and think about the public library. And when we think about that uh, whole tension in between the absolutely inappropriate uh, concept of intellectual property when it comes to the, to the digital, and let's just uh, yeah let's uh, let's discuss and uh, yeah let's let's uh, tell a few stories around it. Uh, thank you very much.